So thank you for joining me today. We are going to install two parts that I've been meaning to install for a very long time on the air ride in the trunk. And we have three questions that always get asked about this part that we're answering today. So stick around. So as you can see with the air ride setup, I eliminated my hard lines on here and back here. It might have been because I was a noob and didn't know what I was doing or the fact that it is a daily driven car and the vibrations would always affect the fittings because the hard lines are sturdy and solid. They don't have wiggle room when you go over and you drive over a bunch of stuff. So I ended up replacing them because I would always get these little leaks on my valves and my uh, sending units for my pressure gauge. So I went with the rubber, the soft lines, not rubber, the nylon DOT, whatever, and haven't had any leaking issues, but I am keeping the hard lines for the tank to the compressor. And that's what we're working on today. So today we are installing the hard lines back from the tank to the compressor. We are adding this guy. He is a water trap. It's something I've been needing to install for quite some time now. I've had them and just never got around to install them. And when I did the setup, I said I was going to install them and I didn't, but I need to. So the importance of a water trap is the first questions we're going to ask, which is, what is a water trap? Well, in a sense, it's, it's trapping the water that's produced by the heat of the compressor. I like to think of it as an insurance policy for your air ride setup when your compressor is doing its job, but it creates a lot of heat. So all that heat, that hot air that's compressed by your compressor goes into your tank, it cools down. What happens when hot air cools down? It creates moisture, creates water. That water goes into your tank. From your tank, it goes into your valves. From your valves, it goes into your bags. So a water trap essentially is just an insurance policy for your air ride system. It's just gonna protect everything that's in there, especially the vital parts, such as any rubber, O-rings, diaphragms, so it doesn't corrode, you don't get leaks, you don't get debris into it. So a water trap is really just trapping the water. So the air will come in from your compressor, it'll go into here, water will fall down into this little container right here, and then it'll go to where it needs to go, into your manifolds or wherever. So essentially, it's just an insurance policy for your vehicle. It traps the water and keeps it in here. There is a drain at the bottom. You just push it up. This will be pressurized, push down. You'll just push it up and it'll drain the water out of it. Question number two that I've always heard. Where do I need to place my water trap at? This is really up to you. So if you think about how it works, so you have your compressor that produces air and it gets hot and it runs a line and you have a check valve and then your check valve goes into your tank. From your tank, you'll have a line that comes down to your manifolds and from your manifolds out to your bags. So a lot of people will say that you need to put your water trap between your check valve and your tank and it'll prevent water from getting into your tank. Some people say, well, put it in between your tank and your manifold so you don't get water in your manifold that goes to your bags. Either one of those will work. It all depends on your application. I'm gonna do it in between the tank and the manifold. I don't want water in the manifold. I don't mind getting water in the tank. I do have a drain port in the tank where you pull down and you can drain out the water. The tank is the most inexpensive part of your air ride suspension. Compressors are expensive. Bags are expensive, especially if you got bags over sleeve or like struts. So when you have a sleeve bag where it goes over your actual strut, those are more expensive. Your manifolds are expensive. A tank, you can get a tank for 30 bucks up to 100, 200, depending on the size, but depending on whether it's aluminum or steel, if it's painted, if it's chrome. So they're the most inexpensive part of your system. I'm not gonna say cheap, but inexpensive. So getting water into that, not a big deal in my opinion. So I'm gonna go in between the tank and the manifold so I can protect my manifold. Not too concerned with the tank, but if you want to, you can put it in between your uh, compressor check valve and the tank to prevent any water from going into your tank. A lot of people do. I run that 
setup before in many trucks. Um, but in this one, I want to protect the manifold. The manifold is one of the most expensive. If I have to replace that or tear it apart, you're down for a day. I mean, a tank, if you need to replace a tank, you're down for like an hour, taking the old one out, putting the new one in. It's not a big deal. So that's the way I'm doing it is from the tank to the manifold to protect that. If you get any debris into your manifolds, those have diaphragms and O-rings, that dirt, that debris, that water can dry it up, crust it out, and you're gonna have a leak. Um, if it gets past your manifold into your bags, if you have a bag over stress style, those little O-rings that seal everything up can go to crap. You don't want that. So use the insurance policy of a water trap, put it in place, depending on where you want, it's not, there's no one set standard of where it needs to go, in my opinion. So some people will say, yes, it needs to go here, it needs to go here. Really, it's up to you. Just put it on. And question number three, do I really need a water trap? Well, just like with question number two, it's up to you and what are you using your air ride suspension for? So if you're doing a daily driven car or even a car that you just take out every weekend, I suggest, yes, get a water trap because you're gonna produce a lot of moisture and, uh, and it's gonna go into your system and you just don't want that. If it's a show vehicle and you have a lot of hard polished lines and chrome setups and the most driving it does is onto a trailer and then off of a trailer to a parking spot and a show, you're not driving this thing much. You may move it around here and there. You really don't need a water trap. Uh, I suggest a drain plug in your tank so you can drain out any moisture that gets into your tank. But I don't believe that you need a water trap. It kind of takes away from the aesthetics of a custom show setup in your trunk or under your bed or in your bed or wherever you have it on whatever application you have. So it's very clean when you don't have a water setup, trap setup. But on a vehicle that you run more than four times a month, I suggest it. It's, it's an insurance policy. You don't want to sit there and just randomly be spending money on replacement parts just because of water. So I do recommend it if it's a vehicle gets driven a lot. I don't recommend it if it's a show vehicle. You want to keep an aesthetics for a show vehicle. You want it to look clean. So water traps and also when draining it, you can run into problems. Speaking of draining, I've already talked about how it's pressurized in here. This will pop down. And then when you want to drain it, you just push it up. So on these ones, there's threaded on the inside. So I can actually put a fitting in there and run a tube so I don't have to drain it right in my trunk. I can actually drain it on the outside, which is a plus. Remember though, on every water trap, there's an arrow, a directional arrow, and it'll tell you which way that the air is flowing from where. So this is coming from my tank to my manifold. So it should be flowing this way, which the arrow is pointing that way. They're directional. Make sure you check on that. Also verify the max PSI rating that is on your water trap. There are some that are only rated for 150 max PSI, which is good for such things as like train horns and, and just small compressors for filling up air. But most people that I know that run an air ride suspension, their kill switch, their pressure switch sensor for their tank is up to 180 to 200 PSI. So you wanna make sure that you can reach that max without blowing out the diaphragms on your water trap and just leaking water and air everywhere. These are rated for 300 PSI. For the most part, they're all going to be about this size. There are a few bigger ones and different styles and things like that, but they're lightweight, so they're not going to sag. You can make mounting brackets for it. Anything you want, because these are hard lines, they're just going to sit there and hang and hover like a magic trick, no strings attached. And they're going to do the job perfectly. So to recap, what is a water trap? A water trap is just essentially a trap for water. It's your insurance policy for your air ride. Where do I need to put this at? You can put it anywhere that you desire that you want to put the most security insurance in your part, either between your check valve on your compressor to your tank or from your tank to your manifold. Question number three, do I really need one? Like I said, it's all up to you and your application. Do you really need one? The, the main answer is no. If you want to replace your parts and have water and everything and just uh, do deterioration of your parts a lot sooner than they should be, no, you don't need one. Um, is it a good idea? I think it is. I think it is a good idea, but it also depends on your application. So just remember, if you're doing a show vehicle and you just want it to look nice, whatever. If you're driving it, 
pretty much every week, whether it's a one time a week or seven times a week, I recommend it. So just keep that in mind. It's up to you. It's your vehicle. It's your build. You can do whatever you want. You don't have to listen to me. I'm just trying to give good advice. Um, learn from my mistakes. I've run it without um, a water trap and it's not that bad, but you will get rusty water buildup in your tank, which then goes into your hoses, which goes into your manifolds, which goes into your fittings, which goes into your back. Then you're having to clean or replace that stuff. And I don't like spending money that I don't need to spend. So on that note, let's get these installed and we'll check out what it looks like. All right, stick around. So we got the water trap, one right here and one back in there. They are lightweight, so they just kind of hang there and float there and look kind of cool and blend into everything else. But like I said, my compressor, my check valve, from the compressor to the manifolds, we got our water trap on each one. So it's gonna protect my valves, my manifold, then it's gonna protect all my fittings, and then it's gonna protect all my lines, and it's gonna protect all my bags right here. Right at the bottom, I don't think you can see it, but we do have a drain plug. So when water gets in the tank, I can just drain it. Water gets in the trap, I can just drain it. Security, insurance, everything's gonna be running tip top for years to come. No issues until something just crazy happens, but that's all it is. It's just inline water traps. All right, so I hope you guys enjoyed that. I installed it, I hope it answered some of your questions. I hope it helped somebody out there, whether they were confused on whether or not they need a water trap, where a water trap goes and what a water trap does. There you go. I hope I explained it thoroughly enough that you guys can get it and understand it and learn from it and learn from my mistakes from my past. Um, we, we all just need a little bit of help sometimes. There's a vision for this car and, it, and it's growing and it's becoming something and you guys are along for the ride and I appreciate you. Um, we got plenty more to come, so stick around. Um, get out there, create something build something, you know, have a vision for a future for yourself, for your vehicle, for a business, for school, whatever it is you want to do. There's a saying that says a man without a vision has no future and a man with no future always runs to his past. We don't run to our past. We run forward. We keep moving forward. Shout out to TJ Hunt right there. But remember, get out there, create something, build something, get out there and, and, and have a purpose for yourself. I appreciate you guys for watching. Hit that subscribe button if you already haven't. Hit that bell notification so you don't miss any more because we got plenty more. We already have a sneak peek in the background of what's going on next. Uh, remember, share the video, leave a comment. I appreciate you guys for watching it from the bottom of my heart. Stay gold, stay humble. Peace.